10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. our broadcast. I'm Dr. Roger L. Green, Sr., pastor and founder of Prayer and Deliverance Worldwide Ministry. So glad that you're here. So glad you're here in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have a wonderful time today uh, talking about the Word of God, and I'm just so excited about what God is doing and has done, will do, and you just need to stay encouraged and stay rooted and grounded and watch what God does in your life. A wonderful time today. We're going to be speaking to you today from 2 Chronicles, chapter number 26, verse number 11 through verse number 16. And we'll read our printed text and see what the Lord will say to our hearts. Let us turn to our scripture for today. 2 Chronicles, chapter number 26, verse number 11 through verse number 16. And I do beg your indulgence. Uh, as we prepare to read the Word of God. The Word of God says this, Uzziah had a host of fighting men that went out to war by bands according to the number of their account by the hand of Jael, Jael the scribe, and Messiah, the ruler, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. The whole number of the chief of the fathers of the mighty men of valor were 2,600. And under their hand was an army, 300,000 and 7,500, that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the hosts, shields and spears and helmets and habergons and bows and slings to cast stone. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. Verse 16, But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. Look at somebody next to you and tell them, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. No matter how much God bless you, no matter how much you gain in life, no matter how much you acquire or achieve, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. Stay humble. If you'll stay humble, God will continue to bless you just like he did Isaiah. When he was humble, God blessed him and strengthened his hand. This man had a lot going on. He had a lot going on. God had blessed him tremendously, and he had it going on. And he was, uh, he was all of that in a bag of chips. But the problem he had was that he felt it within himself and became uh, prideful and arrogant, and he lost his balance, he lost his footing, and lost his opportunity. And so we don't want that to happen to you. So let's look at the introduction and background to our text on today. Uzziah was the king of Judah, and he reigned for 52 years 
in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had did. He sought God in the days of Zechariah, the priest, who was a man uh, who loved righteousness and who loved godliness also. And as long as he sought the Lord, God, God prospered him. I'm talking to someone today because I hope that this sheltering in and this pandemic does not cause you to develop a false footing or a false sense of security into thinking that I got it made now. Uh, I don't have to worry too much. I've been saved 20 years, you know, uh, and start to do things that are not pleasing in the sight of the Lord. We must keep our guards up at all times. And so um, King Uzziah had success against the Philistines, um, the built up cities. He built cities around them, um, the Arabians, the Ammonites, uh, and the Ammonites even paid tribute to him, uh, gave him uh, money uh, because they feared his great military power and the influence of him as the king. And so King Uzziah's name spread it abroad and he was strong. He was a strong king and he had a very well armed military. He had weapons that were far advanced, uh, more advanced than his contemporaries. And he was able to keep everyone at bay because of his military machinery. Uh, and so as a result, uh, everything sort of rocked along pretty good there, and he had it pretty well made. And his army consisted of 2,600 mighty men of valor and 307,500 fighting men under them. And he had towers built in the desert, and he dug wells, he had cattle. Uh, he had about anything any king could ask for at that time. So uh, he had uh, wealth in the low country as well as in the plains. And he was so powerful and blessed that he didn't even have to send his whole army out to fight. But he sent them out in bands. And therefore, he was able to discern, well, how many men do you figure I need for this campaign? How many do I need for that campaign? And not even send out his entire army, but just enough men to get the job done. That was how blessed he was. And so then uh, the Bible says that he made engines to sit upon bulwarks to shoot arrows and uh, stone against his enemies. Nobody else had this kind of weaponry in that day. And that's what made him uh, more powerful than he perhaps would have been had he not have it, had those kinds of, of weapons. So God had marvelously helped him, just like God has marvelously helped some of us. And uh, we know that if it hadn't been for the hand of God that has been resting on us, we wouldn't be where we are today. We know that God has favored us. Well, God favored this king. He was a favored king. And, and so uh, he was strong and God blessed him. Uh, he started out, he didn't have all those things, but God blessed him until he became strong. He became strong. His name went out throughout all the gates. People knew him for miles around. And so, and not only was he known, he was feared as a leader, as a king. And so he had everything he needed or could ever dream of. You know, isn't that something? You have more than what you could even dream of happy. happy. <laughs> that's, 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 pretty, that's pretty much there. Uh, but it was sort of like some people have it today. 
you know, we have a lot to be thankful for, and yet some of us feel the arrogance and the pride of our possessions and don't realize and recognize that God is the one that's blessing you. God is the one that's keeping you. God is the one that's establishing your name and, and giving you the influence that you have. This was the posture of this king. But the problem that he had was, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it, when God bless you, you have to be careful not to allow pride and arrogance to set in. And, and, and oftentimes people who get blessed like that, they think they know everything because they have everything. And what they don't have, they feel they have the wealth to go out and purchase. Be careful about that kind of mindset and that kind of of attitude. God have enriched people and uh, they are blessed even in the time of this pandemic when there are some people who don't even have enough to meet their needs. And so we have to understand that God has been good to us and we ought to give him praise. We ought to love and thank God every day for what he has done. So verse number 16 in the Bible says, but when he was strong, this but is a contrasting word. It's getting ready to take you to another thought now. But what we're going to do, we're going to prepare uh, our hearts and our minds to receive this word because but changes the whole parameter of what I just said. And we're going to look at that as soon as we come back from break. God bless you. back, right? Before we went to break, we were talking about uh, how King Uzziah uh, had gotten lifted up, and we were looking at verse number 16 of our printed text. If you would look at it, the Bible says, when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God, and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. I have pondered and pondered and pondered in my heart and my mind, why did he do that? You know, why did he go into the temple and attempt to perform the priest office? He had not been called, chosen, appointed, anointed, or consecrated in that office. And yet he chose out of the clear blue sky simply because he was a king, and he had the authority to do what he wanted to do. He decided to do that. But when it comes to the work and the will of God, you must be careful 
thinking more highly of yourself than you ought, you must be careful about stepping outside of the boundaries of which God has anointed and appointed you to carry out. You must be careful. And I'm saying to you, let the experience of King Uzziah, amen, be an example to you to help you stay in the right posture, stay in the right frame of mind, stay in the right place and perform only those things that God have called, chosen, appointed, anointed, and consecrated you to do. All right. And so he transgressed against the Lord. He went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar. He wasn't called to do this. This, this was the work and the duty of the priestly order. Uh, it was their responsibility to carry out this function. And so therefore, uh, this is a warning to those who think that just because you have seen the priest perform his duties, that in your mind you have said, well, that's easy. I can do that. Yeah, but have you been called to do that? Have God anointed you or appointed you or have you been consecrated to do that? That is the question, not whether or not you can do it. You can do about whatever you want to do without the anointing, but it's not going to profit anything in the kingdom and God is not going to bless it nor endorse it. So we have to be careful about what we do because what you're going to see before we, we, we close out today, you're going to see the demise of those who take upon themselves to execute functions and doing things that God has not appointed them to do. And so this is what uh, uh, my whole entire goal is today, is to educate and inform, motivate, and inspire you to continue to do things according to God's principle, according to God's lead, according to his practice, and, as, and, 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 and what he desired to have us to do. And so we have to understand that uh, it is very dangerous uh, making assumptions in the kingdom of God. It's very dangerous uh, to do that. And so uh, this man, uh, out of the clear blue sky, just decided, well, you know, I'm going to go into the temple and I'm going to perform the priestly duties uh, myself. And I, I, don't, I still don't understand it. It's, it's a mystery why, after God had done all that he had done for him, why he still wanted to do that. Glory be to God. And so now, King Uzziah's reign can be divided into two parts, the good years and the bad years. All right. So the Bible says that uh, the real priest, uh, Azariah, um, withstood King Uzziah for his transgression. Thank God there's somebody, amen, that's got the courage and the boldness to stand up to what's wrong and to name it and call it for what it is. Uh, uh, King, uh, the high priest, Azariah, uh, withstood him for his transgression. But what he did, he went and got 80 more priests uh, who were valiant men. Glory be to God. Priests were valiant men, men of courage. Uh, men who uh, uh, was like-minded and they came and they approached the king uh, and went in to see him uh, and only this time the people were not in danger of perishing. Uh, you know when Esther said uh, if I perish, I perish I'm going to see the king. Well this people, amen, went in and they weren't going in with the notion and the idea of perishing uh, or even being in danger of perishing. It was the king himself that was in danger of perishing. So tell somebody, amen, this wasn't an Esther moment, glory be to God, but a godly moment. This was any time a man of God stand up against transgression, it's a godly moment. And so they said unto him, King, what are you doing? And so just the tenor of their voices in that day, kings had people put to death for less than that. And so, uh, but they confronted him because 
he was wrong and he was to blame because he didn't have rights to go into the temple and to perform the priestly order, duty. And so um, God didn't consecrate him to do that. Uh, and anytime anyone uh, decided to take uh, an office and have not been properly uh, vetted for that office, have not been properly uh, called, uh, chosen, or appointed, or consecrated. Uh, listen, everything in the house of God that's done as well as the vessels in the house of God has to be consecrated. The offering pails are consecrated. The chairs, the window works, the instruments, the baptismal pool, everything in the church is consecrated, has been dedicated, has been appropriated, and is set aside for God's use. Only. God's use only. You don't see, uh, glory be to God, the, the snare drums uh, or the drums that's being used in the church on Sunday in the club on Saturday night. Glory be to God. Y'all are hearing me. The keyboard shouldn't be in the club on Saturday night either. Glory be to God. Why? Because those things are dedicated unto the Lord. Not only are they dedicated, but the men uh, and women who use them have been dedicated, have been consecrated, have been made holy, amen, to perform uh, in the house of God. And so it's, you can't do anything in the house of God without the anointing. You must be anointed to do what you do in the house of God. This king hadn't gotten it yet. This king hadn't realized it yet. But listen, he had been around a while. This man reigned for 52 years. He was around a long time. And not to have learned that much shows a deficiency in his learning. And so God didn't consecrate him to burn incense in the temple. And so they said, get out of the temple, for thou hast transgressed against the Lord. It's a dangerous thing to try to take over the priest duty just because he's not doing like you want him to do or when you want him to do it or how you want him to do it. Glory be to God. Or as fast as you want him to do it. There's sometimes people will try to tell the preacher, uh, this is when you need to do this. This is, when, this is what you need to do. And, and they're full of that. Uh, but God doesn't like that. That is not pleasing in the sight of God. The Bible said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt you, that he might appoint you, that he might anoint you, that he might choose you. Because you got to realize many are called, but few are chosen. Until God vets you, you haven't been chosen. God has to choose you, amen, to perform functions in his house. Otherwise, you're on dangerous ground. You're in dangerous territory. Be careful. All right? The Bible says that Uzziah, because the king, I mean, I'm sorry, because the priest and the priestly order had confronted him, the Bible says that he was wroth, that he was angry because they had called his hand. They had, and I'm sure what was going through his mind was, how dare you? Uh, come and confront me. I'm the king over this uh, uh, kingdom. I can have you put to death. He doesn't realize that all of his power comes from God. And, and, and therefore, he can't do anything unless God allows him to do it. He couldn't even accomplish the things that he had accomplished except for the help of God. But he didn't realize that. Why? Because he was stuffed with pride and arrogance. And I'm saying to you today, people, don't allow pride and arrogance to creep in on you. It is too costly, too expensive for a saint to possess. And so therefore, leave it where it is. Don't engage. Stay humble. The more humble you remain, the more God's going to add to you, the more God's going to bless you. And we'll talk about that more 
right after we come back from another break. God bless you. We love you. Stay tuned. There's still more to come. God bless. you for remaining with us. We're going to continue our discussion. We're headed down the homeward stretch now, and uh, we want to uh, bring everything into focus and bring everything into play, and I want to uh, accomplish my goal today of uh, someone uh, just understanding their posture in relationship to God and remaining humble. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. Uh, it can get you in trouble. It got this king in trouble because he thought more highly of himself than he ought to have thought. He did not respect the office of the priest. He did not respect God's house. He thought that he could do whatever he wanted to do in God's house. There are people today who think that they can do whatever they want to do in the house of God just because they don't see lightning flashing and hear thunder roaring. But you better be mighty uh, 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 apprehensive because God is on the scene. God is presence. The Bible said he sits high and he looks low and he behold the good and the bad, the good and the evil. And so you have to be careful of how you conduct yourself. And I'm going to get more into this as we go down uh, towards the end of this thing, you're going uh, you're gonna to realize and you're going to hear some things that's going to help you uh, uh, really adjust your attitude and your mindset because of what happened with this particular king. Uh, and I know that somebody don't like this kind of teaching, don't like this kind of preaching uh, that may even get mad. Well, that's good because oftentimes whenever you get angry, you'll do something about yourself. And so uh, my goal is to make you angry so that it can uh, 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 perpetuate change uh, in your behavior. Because there are some things that are going on in the house of God now that need to be nipped in the bud. But pastors, you must, amen, preach the truth. You must teach people the truth. You must teach them the right way, the godly way. And you must resist mavericks and rebels in the church uh, because of righteousness. And uh, the Bible said, cry aloud, spare not, tell my people of their wickedness. And so therefore we have to have to do that. And so um, now here's what we want to do. We want to take a look at. What happened when this king assumed authority and came into the temple to do his good pleasure and thought that he could do whatever he wanted to do in the house of God? The king, uh, while he was yet in uh, the temple and upset and angry with the priests because they had challenged him because of his transgression, and that's the way it is oftentimes with people. As soon as you confront them about their sin, they get angry. That's their first reaction. They get angry. But my experience has been they get angry initially, but eventually they calm down and realize their, the error of their way. And so therefore, you got to give them that space to, to have uh, that cooling down or cooling off period so they can understand the nature and the consequence of their behavior, all right? So verse 19 says, while he was wroth, he was angry with the priest, 
leprosy, good God Almighty, leprosy rose up from beside the altar of incense, the very place where he had intended to do his evil. Leprosy rose up and it sat on his forehead. Glory be to God. And when it hit him, he realized something was wrong. And when he realized it, he said within himself, I've got to get out of here. But here's what you have to realize. It was too late. I always tell people, don't wait until you see the hand of God falling down upon you to make corrections. It's too late. It's too late to make corrections when the hand of God fall down on you. He had an opportunity. When the priest confronted him, he had an opportunity for humility, for learning, for knowledge, for correction, and for forgiveness. But instead, he took the other route. He was angry. How dare you approach me? Glory be to God. I'm the king. Don't you forget that. I'm the king. You know, and I've heard bishops sometimes say, I'm the bishop. You know, as if to say, because I'm the bishop, I can sin and do what I want to do. No, no, no. God still holds you accountable. And so therefore, it's important to stay humble. I don't care what your title is. Because your, if your title is not saint, all the other titles don't matter. Glory be to God. So you stay and remember, remember, I'm a saint of God. Leprosy struck him before he left out of the temple. And this is why a lot of people today are not uh, 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 doing what they ought to be doing is because they don't see it happening that quick. And oftentimes the devil have lured you into thinking that you got away with something. But let me tell you something. There's a difference between getting by and getting away. I still hear the voice of a famous evangelist by the name of Evangelist Francis Rogers from California. She used to come and preach for us in the early days of, uh, of my, my sainthood. And she would always tell us, you can get by, but you'll never get away. And so uh, he couldn't get away either. And so we have to understand that it was too late. Uh, it's just like, uh, listen, the coronavirus, glory be to God. By the time you feel it, by the time you realize you got it, it's too late to do anything about it. And so uh, continue to wear your mask, continue to take precautions, continue to be careful uh, because you don't want to wait until it's too late to implement those kinds of protocols. But the Bible says that Uzziah remained a leper until the day of his death. Glory be to God. And when he died, uh, the prophet Isaiah, amen, picked up on it uh, in his death. And Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, Isaiah said, In the year that Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And he was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Glory be to God. And above it stood sheriffs, who are, which are angels. Each one had six wings, two to cover their face, and two to cover their feet, and two did they fly. And so as a result, one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, Holy is the Lord, that the glory of the whole world is full of his glory. And because the whole world is full of his glory, you cannot take it upon yourself to do whatever it is that you think you big, bad, bold enough to do because the glory of the Lord fills the earth. And when the glory of the Lord fills the earth, everything must be comported to holiness. It's holiness or hell without no man shall see God. And I just want 
to let you know today that you better check yourself. You better check your behavior in the house of God before it's too late. Don't let the shelter in get to your head. Don't you let it get you to where you can't reason and rationalize and know right from wrong and good from evil and get premature, get ahead of the man of God as he hears from God. God is saying shelter in place. God is saying steady she go. God is saying take your time. God is saying be anxious for nothing but by prayer and supplication let your petitions be made known unto God but you are in a hurry. You want to do what you want to do when you want to do it. Uh, glory be to God. I hear they got folks, amen, speaking in tongues over the telephone, amen, laying hands on the dial phone and getting the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues. But I come to let you know today that, listen, just because we're not in the house of God, God is still the house of the God of the house. And so as a result, we got to do things that are pleasing to him. We cannot start implementing and, and discovering uh, alternative ways to do what we want to do because we can't get to the church because we can't get to church right now. I'll just turn this right here and do whatever I want to do right here because I can't get to the man of God. I can't get, listen, you hadn't even asked for the man of God. You need to ask for the man of God first before you ever even start taking matters into your own hand. And so you must understand Pastors are still the priests of the house. They are still the call of the day. They are the chosen and anointed and the consecrated to watch for your soul. And you cannot go on God duty for yourself by, listen, I think about it, how they used to tell me, you know, when, when we used to say, when a person try to represent themselves in a grievous case of, in law, they say, he that has himself for an attorney has a fool for a client. It's the same thing in the house of God. When you try to be your own pastor, King Uzziah tried to be his own priest, tried to be his own pastor. He tried to run the house of God just like he was running the kingdom. And there's a difference. And God showed him the difference when he struck him with leprosy. He did the same to Miriam and Moses when they went against Moses. And God God will do the same thing. You must be careful, respect, have humility, have patience, help your pastor, pay your tithes and offering, do what you can for those who are in need and stay in your place and God will bless you. Well, I'm about out of time. Oh, when it gets good, I got to go. I'll see you on next time on Wednesday. God bless you. Stay encouraged. Stay with God and stay humble. Shalom. Shalom.